Thank you for auditing the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who almost didn't review Bright Future by Adrienne Lenker. Now, why not? I love that Big Thief album. I particularly loved her solo album from a few years ago. And I was thinking about, like, what was stopping me from reviewing this? I listened to it, you know, a couple songs, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to skip this one. And then I kind of thought about it, and I realized my reasoning was purely personal and silly. On one hand, I, I hold a grudge against Amazon because uh, I ordered this album for my niece. I thought she'd really like it. And they sent her some like weird jazz album, which she ended up liking. But <laughs> for some reason, I've held that against Adrienne, Adrienne Lenker since then. The other reason is a little bit more personal, and that's that uh, the last album, the, the Big Thief album, Taking Thunder Mountain by Storm, whatever it was called, he, my father asked me to print out all of the lyrics because I talked about how great her lyricism is, just what a great lyric writer she is. And he was just fascinated by it. And so I printed out the whole thing and he read it and we discussed it. And that must have been bumping around the back of my head. You know, he died a little over a year ago. And, and... <sighs> anyways, grief is a tough thing to figure out. It acts on your brain in funny ways. And then the third reason has to do with my wife which I'll talk about later, but they all basically summarize in the idea <laughs> that this album is just very emotional. It's very emotional music. I'm a very emotional man. I cry. I'm, I'm not someone who's afraid of being emotional. I've been to a lot of therapy. I plan to go back for some more. But uh, it just was hitting too many raw nerves, and just the couple songs I listened to made me realize that. But that's her strength. That's Adrienne Lenker's strength is as a songwriter, she's able to, at least for me, hit me so hard in my emotional center. Or as you kids would say, hit me in my feelings. How ironic is it that Drake's biggest hit is in my feelings and his number one thing is not having emotions. Anyways, it hit me in my feelings so hard uh, that I could barely even stare at it. It was like looking at the sun, right? I mean, I talk about that often in relationship to grief and this album isn't an album of grief, but it just makes me feel so much. Another issue is, you know, I'm a, I'm a full-time professor, I'm a part-time music cricket, and, and when, you're, when you criticize music, you like to have genres and you like to have things to say. And I don't really know the genre of Lenker, I don't know, she's kind of folk, kind of country, you can just sort of throw indie on there. Really, she's just songs. She's just songs, that's what she does. She just writes songs and then that's what they are. You see, I have my Hank Williams bobblehead back there. She reminds me a lot of Hank Williams, uh, not just because, you know, the album cover. You know, this is basically the album cover. I mean, she doesn't look like Hank Williams, but, you know, big hat, kind of a mysterious expression on there. Uh, but just Hank Williams' uh, ability, even though he is a country musician, etc., his ability to just write music that just cuts right through you, although I would argue that actually... Adrian Lenker's much more emotionally successful. I mean, while we're while we're thinking of famous songwriters, what I realized she reminds me the most of is, and, and I say it a lot on this channel, is Bob Dylan. Now, calm down, calm down. I know I compare everybody to Dylan, but what am I supposed to do? Okay, just because a lot of people remind me of Neil Young, Bob Dylan, or Harry Nilsson doesn't mean that Neil Young, Bob Dylan, and Harry Nilsson don't have a lot of influence. Just in the way that, in particular, my favorite era of Dylan, the, the mid, early to mid-70s, the sort of new morning, planet waves era, like that's really where he was with his writing. It was just, it was rock, but it was folk, but it was country, but it was just sort of just songwriting. But if we're going to be honest, with that emotion, I think Adrian Lenker is Dylan Plus. And that's obscene, and you can get mad at me if you want. It's okay, Dylan fans are already pissed at me but she just has this emotional power. And that emotional power, even though like I'm a dude and my life experience in theory should be a lot closer to that of Bob Dylan's, I just don't. So there's one line off, off of her last solo album. I wanna sleep in your car while you're driving. And that lyric, I swear to God it killed me because, <laughs> uh, Speaking of my parents, you know, my parents uh, would drive drunk quite often, so I was always afraid. It's made me hyper-attentive, like I'm hyper-focused all the time, like I'm a nervous guy. You know, I, I, if I walk into a room, I clock every book that's on the shelf. I 
have all this stuff, I'm hypertentive because, you know, when you grow up and you're not safe when you're in a car, when you're not safe in general, uh, you think if you pay attention, you'll be able to save yourself. So the vulnerability that she was singing about, I want to sleep in your car when you're driving, like for me to sleep in your car when you're driving, that shows the highest level of care and vulnerability and just trust in a relationship. I want to lay in your lap when I'm crying. Same basic idea, a little bit more direct. And that's how it ties into my wife. And I realized this yesterday when I listened to the album, I was determining, am I going to review this or not? And I heard one line, I'll tell you what it is in a second. And uh, I just, <laughs> just, just the waterworks. My wife was upstairs. I was sitting in my couch. I was playing with my baby. I hear this one lyric and I just start bawling. And what I realize is um, Adrienne Lenker writes, and I don't know anything about her life. I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know, I don't know her relationship status. I don't know who she's with, what kind of people she's with, if she's with anybody, whatever it is. All I can tell you is the way that she writes about love of somebody is the way that I feel. And I'm at a point in my life right now, you know, I got a little tiny baby and teenagers and full-time job and everything where, I, you know, my wife and I, we love each other and it's awesome. But sometimes it's hard to, act, to be in connection with that feeling. Like, you know, just because it's just day after day after day, who's making dinner, who's going to Wegmans, who's doing all that stuff. And it's not to say the love isn't there, but like that, <laughs> like that feeling that you get when you know you're with somebody, when you can sleep in the back of the car with them, like that feeling of like, appreciation and joy and and just true like love and vulnerability and so this one lyric she just sings this lyric and i just unlocks that for me and no other singer can do that okay now that's a personal thing right maybe maybe she doesn't do that for you at all but i think that she can do that is a testament to her power as a songwriting i'm trying to build more suspense into my into my uh into my uh, videos. So I'm not going to tell you yet which lyric from this album made me turn on the waterworks. <laughs> is that silly? The waterworks? Now, as far as the album goes, love is not the only theme. It's the main theme. Nature is good. Love is good. Technology is okay. It's questionable. Technology is complicated and pollution is bad. Really what I think it is, is, and this is, if there's one thing I say, you know, if, if there was like a talking sky doll, uh, one of them would just be someone saying gratitude is the key to happiness, right? Because if you're not grateful for what you have, you'll never be happy. It doesn't matter how much you have. And, uh, and she really just, this feels like an album of gratitude, lucid gratitude, right? She's not just saying like, everything's great. I love my puppy. Live, laugh, love, right? It's, it's, she's very clear minded with problems in her life, with difficulty in the world, all that. But she expresses this kind of joy and love and appreciation for the things and people in her life, which it just might be singular. It might just be a very special thing that very few artists do. Because most artists want to sing about what they don't have. They want to sing about lack. They want to sing about pain. All that. So uh, I've been using the, the, the pronouns uh, she, and I think that's correct. So I, I just looked it up, right? Because she's young, I don't know, 30, 31, whatever it is. And you, know, you can never be quite too sure. You know, the album cover, uh, she's sort of intentionally, you know, I wouldn't say androgynous, but, you know, short hair and a cowboy hat. You know, she's coded mysteriously. I, I don't know. Like, I remember reading somewhere that maybe she was married to the dude in the band or maybe she's gay or whatever it is. And so I just looked it up. I looked it up on on, uh, on Google. It's a website. They don't sponsor me, but you can check them out if you want. So G-O-O-G-L-G-E-L dot com. And uh, the first thing that pops up when you type in <laughs> Adrian Lenker, uh, pronouns is this Twitter conversation. And this just made me appreciate her as a person even more. Because what pops up is this Twitter back and forth with this journalist, uh, Omar Skar. S-A-K-R, I believe is how it's said. And he has this whole story about how he had an interview with them and how Adrian was just totally rude and 
avoided the question of Palestine, I don't know how that came up, and was just like forced them to remove it and was really upset and was just treated so poorly. And then underneath that, Adrian responds herself and says, Hi, Omar. I'm really sorry that this was your experience and you've been holding this all these years. The reason I felt uncomfortable during and after the interview is because I was asked to define my sexual identity, which I wasn't ready to articulate publicly at that time. There it is. Hey, how do you be a celebrity? That's how you do it. Of course, she got all pissed and walked off and looked like a, like a, I'm going to use a gender term here, looked like a diva. Okay? But that's not the truth. The truth was she didn't like that question. She's tired of being asked it. So I am going to do her the service of not approaching it and just leaving it there. But seriously, find that if we could do like a time capsule of internet life, that whole thread is a perfect encapsulation of how impossible it is to have nuance. It actually reminded me of this fight I got in with this dude at the gym yesterday, but I don't need to get into that. So let's get into the album, huh? 10 minutes in the video, I'm doing well. Normally it's like half an hour before I get to the video. If this is your first time watching, smash the like bucket, subscribe, this is the way I do it. I don't edit my videos. I don't give scores, okay? If you see me review something, it means I like it. And I'm just gonna talk to you about it. I'm gonna give you analysis. If you put in the letters AVAA, that stands for awesome video as always, I will always heart a comment that says that. I'm really happy to talk about this album. Uh, and and <laughs> the main thing is that when we talk about gratitude being the key to happiness, we as a humanity, as a people, just need to appreciate that we live in the moment where this person is writing music. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure there are better songwriters out there right now. I'm not going to go far, as far as to say she's the best songwriter because there's a lot of great songwriters. But her ability to write these lyrics and sing these songs at, at, the, at the clip that she's doing it, it's like really special. It's easy to sit there and complain and say, oh, back in the 60s, we had the Beatles and the Stones and all that. Cool. But like, we have this. <laughs> we have Bright Future by Adrian Lenker. I kept on misspelling it, Adrian Lenker. Apologies, go. So my stamp, my example song of the album, is actually one of the contenders for Song of the Year. Currently, we have Literary Mind, Doves, and Like That in the category for Song of the Year. And uh, that's... Hmm. There might be a couple other songs on there too now I'm thinking about it. Uh, and that's Vampire Empire. So you can click above Picasso's Two Lovers, uh, above the door to hear the song if you haven't heard it before. This song kind of hurts me. It's actually not a very good example song from the album because it's a lot different than most of the album. But this is distilled exactly the kind of music I wanted to make when I made music 25 years ago. Like this is precisely, precisely the vibe, the sound, the emotion, the strength, the power, the vulnerability, everything I was trying to do. Somebody who very clearly loves Velvet Underground and Hank Williams and is able to make a song which sort of mixes that by way of a kind of 90s four-track demo, that's what this is. It is this rocking song. It's like this guitar. It's like kind of ratty. It's actually, speaking of the Stones, it's kind of this like sustained thing, like da na 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 And I, as far as I can tell, the drums are just drumsticks being played on the floor. It just has that feeling. Like the best song I, I ever wrote was with a friend of mine, Keith, and, and it was called Cricket, something like that. And we recorded it on like a little tape recorder. It's lost now, but it just had this like vibe and this feeling. And like, I want that to be reproduced. And that's what this is. It's, it's like poorly recorded, but perfectly, it's perfectly recorded poorly. There's like this fiddle, it's being played high up on the bridge to have the sound and at a certain point there's these little piano plucking out notes. So much energy. And then these lyrics. The milk has just expired, all the leaves are dead. Really sad, all about like love is gone and I'm bleeding on the bed. I actually wrote a fake country song when I was 20 called My Milk Expired on the Same Day Our Love Did. It's not a very good song. It was kind of a joke. This is doing it well, though. Just so much energy. And then she gets this chorus where she's like this insane energy where she goes up on the last word. You give me chill, 
pills. I've had it with the drills. I'm nothing, you are nothing, we are nothing without the pills. I'm empty till she fills, alive until she kills. I'm in her vampire empire, I'm the fish and she's my gills. <clears throat> Thank you. It's catchy, it's cool, it's mysterious, it's sad. It's like implying that like we are nothing with the pills. So it's like implying maybe some addiction, some kind of codependent relationship, some kind of ending thing, a vampire empire. And then there's, listen, I am somebody who is very famous for not liking sex verses, right? Like, especially on rap music. I, I just reviewed that uh, Future and uh, Metro Boomin album. Probably, if you're watching this, you didn't watch my Future Metro Boomin review. Hey, if you're in double trouble, let me know in the comments, okay? You're my people. But anyways, uh, I complained about how Future just has all these gross sex verses. But this is a, this is a sex verse because it's really, really erotic and mysterious and well-written. We jump into the pond and then we come under the shower. You lay upon my pillow and you open like a flower. I wanted to see you naked. I wanted to hear you scream. I wanted to kiss your skin and your everything. I wanted to be your woman. I wanted to be your man. I wanted to be the one that you could understand. Ah. Okay? So I don't care at all if she's talking about a man or a woman or a non-binary person. I don't care. There is no human being alive, in my opinion, no sexual being on earth who does not hear that song and cannot resonate with it and feel its erotic power. And I, it does not matter at all. It doesn't matter. It, like none of those little details that Omar was looking for in that interview matter. And that's why we have to allow artists to say, I'm not ready to talk about if I'm gay or straight or bi. I'm not ready to talk about that because you're going to focus on that. And we end up in a kind of Bruce Lee situation, you know, where you're sitting there staring at the thumb and you need to be looking at the moon and all of its mysterious power, you know? And then there's an instrumental bit here, this little jittery fiddle and a piano. Oh, my God. What a songwriter. What a time. What, what an amazing time to be alive. <laughs> that, that album came out last week and I almost didn't review it. It's funny. Okay, so then I'm going to go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker. I'm going to start off with the opening track, Real House. Hey, <laughs> this is a sad song. Why are you starting off on such a bummer? It's funny because if you don't know, uh, I, I do a first listen usually at the gym. So I'm usually on the elliptical and I use a thing called Tubi, I think is what it's called. Pluto, Pluto TV. I use Pluto TV and uh, I just watch a movie. And so I was watching the movie Airplane, which is a very funny mixture with this album. It's not as far as you think, because Adrienne Lenker has a very keen sense of humor. It's very clear how often she tries to use it. I, I, com I compare her to Dylan a fair amount, not just because they're both from Minnesota and great songwriters, um, but like she seems to have that kind of sense of humor about herself. I've seen that in interviews. I've seen that in the way she talks. So anyways... <laughs> the red zone has always been for loading and unloading. But it was particularly funny with this sad song, this great ratty piano, this bad fiddle, these little hints, and this whole opening line about just youth and innocence and remembering the feel of, like, wind on your face and how great running used to be. I'm asthmatic. Running has never been great for me. Running has always been the worst. If I... <laughs> You know, I have dreams where I enjoy running. Like, that's my dream. I don't dream of flying. I enjoy running and not being like... <laughs> Anyways, I get her point. Nor have I ever braided willow leaves into my hair, like she says. It's all this youth and innocence, and she talks about not feeling strong at 31. She talks about how there's sort of this sense of... of um, like loss of innocence at seeing a scary movie at seven and it keeps going and you think, okay, this is a nice bittersweet story about growing up and growing old. That's cool. I got it. As long as this doesn't go some really dark way, I should be just fine. Do you remember coming to the hospital when I was 14? Oh, my friends all left me there spinning. Dad was angry, but you saw everything and you made me laugh as the nurses undressed me. And you held my hand as they put the needle in me. So it appears to be a conversation, I assume, with her mother, maybe an older sibling or a cousin or an uncle, but whatever it is, 
it's somebody who was there for her, taking care of her. And I, I, I assume mother. I'm just going to go assume mother here. And it's very visceral. It's very bloggy. Like, it feels like a blog post. The rest of the album doesn't follow this pattern where you feel like she's just telling a story, but here she is. But fortunately, that's as dark and sad as this song is going to get referencing a needle. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> you can't kill a dog in your first song. You can't. There's like two rules. Don't hurt kids and don't hurt dogs. There's a website called the dog, <laughs> does the dog die com. It's true. It's not like that, that Google site I was trying to send you to earlier. It's a real site. It's called Does the Dog Die? And I have to look at it before I watch movies with my wife because, I mean, she doesn't like suffering of any kind, so a lot of movies are out for her. But uh, definitely, and like dogs, dogs suffering, that, that's just a no-go, dogs getting hurt. So you can go on that website. I don't sponsor them. They don't sponsor me and see. So this song gets a warning because a dog dies at the end of this song. We held her body as they put the needle in her, and then I saw you cry. The only time she ever sees her mom cries is when the dog dies. This is right up there with uh, Arms of an Angel, the Sarah McLaughlin song they played during the SBCA video. It's unbelievably sad. It's, it's very powerful. It's very evocative. It's about innocence of youth, the loss of innocence, understanding your parents as people, understanding your parents' weaknesses, coming to terms with death, coming to terms with appreciating life, coming to terms with the fragility of middle age, which is what you do when you turn 30. You can also listen to that uh, Ariana Grande album, right? Because she has a whole thing about turning 29. And, you know, it's just a really sad song. But, you know... Sadness is a gift. The next song is called Sadness as a Gift. And uh, I think it's intentionally paired with the last one. Nice little count under one, two, three, four, kind of guitar and piano and little fiddle. This has very Dylan phrasing, like early 70s Dylan phrasing, Planet Wavesy era Dylan. You and I both know there's nothing more to say. Chance has shut her shining eyes and turned her face away. She sings it better than I do. And I love this beautiful harmony that she has with somebody, I don't know who in the chorus. We could, see, we could see the sadness as a gift and still the seasons go so fast. Thinking this one was going to last, maybe the question was too much to ask. So really in keeping with the last album, a lot of these themes of nature and death and movement of life. And then... Here comes the lyric that made me cry. And I don't, I don't even know why. It has something to do with the fact that I'm at a point in my life where I cannot properly express my love to the person who I love. And I know that's awfully personal on a YouTube video, but it's a, a human experience. Because like I've had that experience like not knowing how to express love to people I don't like, right? Like I've had failing relationships. Like how, how did she write a song that makes me that voices how I feel in a way, you know, maybe you don't know. Anyways, you and I could see the same eternity every second brimming with a majesty. I'm going to keep it together now. Keep that closed. But it's a beautiful line. Because seeing into the same eternity every second brimming with a majesty, this is that, okay, we could say it's carpe diem, it sees every moment, but it goes deeper than that. It's not just about seizing every moment and treating it like a resource that's going to be expended and we have to save every moment. It's not that kind of consumerist attitude towards time, life, and death. It's just that every second is brimming with majesty. You know, I look... I look behind me and I see a bunch of trees that have no leaves on them and I see some squirrels running around and I see, you know, the grass that's a, that's a, that's a little bit overrun and I see the other buildings behind me and it's majesty. It's beautiful majesty. You look behind your computer, you look behind your phone, whatever you see out there, there's majesty right there. And if you have someone to look into that eternity with, then you should be lucky. Next track is called Fool. It's a duet with Mr. T. I get one. That's my new thing. I get one joke. I get one improvised joke. I get one improvised joke. An episode. Unless I think of two. In which case I get two. Radically different sound here. 
for an album which on my first listen, when I was not going to listen to it because I was mad at Amazon for sending like Chick Corea <laughs> to, my, to my niece. I forget who it was. Uh, my brother watches my videos. His dad watches my videos. So maybe he'll tell me in the comments uh, who she got instead of Adrienne Lenker. Well, that's an uncle's fault. I should rebuy that album and send it to her. What am I doing? I'm sorry, niece. Um, but just this like, for an album that's very kind of folky and country, it has a lot of different sounds in it. Now we heard that with with the Chills and Bill song, but here with Fool, it's rad. It's like these choppy guitars. It's almost like the Smile or something. It's like these weird choppy sounds, like the tremolo guitar line, kind of funky offbeat rhythms, and it's talking. And this is just talking about friends, like friends getting farms and. It's almost like the beginning is talking about getting a real house, and this is about like moving on and turning 30 and finding a place. And I believe she describes her own body as like a bat in flight. That's hard. Next track is called No Machine. Acoustic guitar. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. It's sort of maybe like a technology question. Let no machine eat away at our dream. Baby, take my hand. Let's go together. I think maybe it's more along the lines of the dehumanizing nature of modern late stage capitalism living in some kind of technologically oppressive state. Uh, and by which I mean a state of being constantly oppressed by technologies and just everywhere. And I, I, it feels like maybe this is just sort of like a, a way of expressing the organic joy of friendship and connection and love versus the machine. You know, the machine that chews us up and eats us out. See my Ariana Grande video. You know, the machine that tries to turn us into grist for the mill, right? Just trying to turn all of our beautiful little wheat stalks into flour to put into a Little Debbie snack cake, okay? I don't know what I'll do without you. Another beautiful, simple love lyric. Speaking of simple love lyrics, to the ocean of your love, I am a river. I just, part of the reason why I wanna do this channel, part of the reason why I do it, is I, you know, I got a lot of books back here, right? But, <laughs> Every semester, someone goes, wow, you read all these books? That's not how it works. I'm familiar with all those books. I've probably read about half of them. And then the rest, I have probably quoted, and okay, maybe like a quarter of them I just have and I'm planning on reading, right? So I don't have as much time in my life. I don't have, I don't have enough time to properly express my love of my family members, much less have time to read books. So getting to listen to this much music gives me access to culture. And whenever you have a, an artist like this who writes lyrics like this, it's giving me access to poetry. To the ocean of your love, I am a river. That is a simple, that is my favorite kind of lyric. It is simple and it is devastating. Next track is called Free Treasure. Um, it's, a, it's about, I only gave myself one joke. So I'm not gonna say it's about the Nicolas Cage movie where he steals the constitution. Uh, this is more about just what's outside my window, you know? The rivers and rocks and eating nice meals and, and referring to everything around her, that machine, as being uh, some guy on the nape of my neck, you know? So that there's, there's outside my window, you see? You see? It's pretty simple, right? It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. But right out there, right out there, that's free treasure. Gratitude is the key to happiness. <laughs> All right? Nice guitar and voice, very simple. Then we get the stamp, Vampire Empire, and then we get Evol, E-V-O-L, love backwards. Paint, just mournful piano to start. And then these lyrics, love spelled backwards is evil people. This, again, happens to be a thing that touches me personally. So first of all, I've grown up my entire life knowing, my mom would tell me this, her, her uh, senior thesis in college at Vassar uh, was called uh, War is Raw. I know that's also the name of a wrestling match in WWF, but, um, <laughs> or WWE, whichever one is not the pandas. Um, I don't know what it was about, but I know she was really proud of that play on words. And, and I'm obsessed with language, right? Like people often ask me, Sky, what kind of book should I get in order to be intelligent? Two books. One, 
get a hunk of bunk, like a huge, like 800 page art history book, and then get a dictionary of etymology, like origin of words. That's, that's the start. For me, that's the start. Then you can move on to, to Bart Musso, if you wish. Um, but I'm obsessed with words. And I have, you know, like I, uh, like I used to work at a place called Red Sub Kolb. I would only call it that. That's Blockbuster backwards. My friends worked at E Fox Scub Rats, right? That's Starbucks coffee backwards, you know? Like I would go get coffee at Snot Ramit. That's Tim, Tim Hortons backwards. Like I don't know why my mind works that way, but I often see words and read them backwards at the same time. When I'm on the subway, when I'm on the T in Boston, if I see it say no step, the first thing I see is no pets. You know, it's just the way that my mind works. And so that's a goofy, funny, funny, ha-ha, goofy thing to do. But what does Adrian do about this? She makes it serious. She takes these words and puts them together and then gives them an emotional heart and she gets an emotional dagger and she makes you run into that dagger. Teach, cheat, part, trap. You have my heart, I want it back. God, devil. God, dog, devil lived, the giver takes, the taker gives. What does that sound? Oh, my colleague is having a meeting next door. You're going to have to hear some of that ambient sound. It's okay. The giver takes, the taker gives. Now, I, I read in some interview that she said that that's about 69. Or as Bill S. Preston Esquire would say, 69. And I think that's her being as smart as, but also I think not. I think that that's the, the take, the giver takes, the taker gives. That is a description of a, of a mutual act of oral sex. Um, <laughs> I don't forget how to say that. Um, but also it's this beautiful idea of like frontwards and backwards and the duality of love and evil and dog and God and all of that. Like it's, it, it is, it is Takeshi 6 9 right here. You know what I mean? Like it is that, um, but it's also something much deeper. And even though these words, there, there's no meaning to the fact these words are backwards, right? It, it's not like live and evil backwards have some connection. There's no connection there, but she's making that connection. Also, I think this could be a Tom York song. Next track is called Candle Flame. So here she's just showing that she can paint a picture. She paints a picture with words and guitars. You know I love you. I can't explain crying over the candle flame. Tell me, she's now I got trains in the background. You know I love you. I can't explain crying over the candle flame. The candle, crying over the candle flame. We see it. Do we not? Do you not see it? Do you not see this woman with her big ass hat? Maybe without the hat. I don't know. I think I see her with the hat over a candle crying. How much more can I say about this album other than she put me in that place? You know I love you. I can't explain. <laughs> Next track is called Already Lost. Another count in, little banjo here. Uh, nice harmony with herself. More like nature, life lyrics. Why do leaves turn yellow and fall? Who absorbs it all? Who absorbs it all? Cell phone says... I think that, I think this is a call to Velvet Underground. You know, Candy says, um, Stephanie says, it's Stephanie, right? What's the cold in Alaska one? Stephanie, I think it's Stephanie. Maybe even Jane says by, uh, by uh, Jane's Addiction. Uh, but it's a kind of modern love story. Like this, you're... <laughs> The, the cell phone says you called, but I don't hear it ring at all. This kind of technological interference that gets in that way. You know, the sort of like the need that they have to have some sort of like real human connection. And then just this lyric. Oh, giver of empathy, it is a gift so bitter that you brought to me. Because I feel what they are feeling and I know that they're free. And the freedom they take is the earthly burden. Just cursing empathy is a fascinating idea. And that's going to stick with me forever. And this song is... This is true, barely a song. It's just sort of an idea. Next track is called Donut Seam. Remember how I said she's funny? So donuts do have, a, some donuts do have a little seam on them from where, where the dough connects. I guess they all must have a seam, right? Because it's not like, I don't think donuts are made in a circle. Jesus, I'm not a baker, but uh, it's kind of a joke because she says, don't it seem, doesn't it seem, but she simplifies it there. Simple guitars and voice work. Someone named Nick Hakim sings along, and it's just great. 
The old world is dying. Doesn't it seem like a good time for swimming before all the water disappears? More this kind of uh, ecological fear, environmental fear. She sings with kind of a southern accent, which I think bugs me. I loved you and I don't regret the way we passed the time drinking coffee, uh, drinking wine. It's, it's nice. You know, it's this nice theme, again, of appreciating time that you have this key to gratitude. And then she talks about acid rain. Listen, kids, young people, I'm right there with you, okay? I grew up in the second wave of fake-ass American environmentalism of 1990. The first wave of fake-ass American environmentalism was 1970, the beginning of Earth Day. The second wave of fake-ass environmentalism in America was 1990, with the 20th anniversary of, of, uh, of Earth Day. And the only reason I say, because you know we're not really doing enough. None of us are doing enough, right? Doesn't matter. Um, but can we take a win? We did it. Like acid rain was a big thing. Like pH levels of water are supposed to be at seven and they were getting as low as two. And my wife, who's a scientist, assures me that that's scandalous. <laughs> I have no idea. But we beat acid rain. I'll include a video in the description that describes how we, humanity, saw a problem that was about the environment. And we said, we can't solve this problem in the environment. It'll cost too much money. And then we got those people who cared about the money to come up with a way where money is happy and the environment is happy. This cap and trade stuff, which I know is a moderate thing and it was passed by George Bush Sr. But hey, the sulfur emissions are down. Like in America and Canada, we passed these cap and trade laws where you have to like literally buy the amount of pollution you can make or you can sell the pollution you don't make. And then we kept lowering the emission standards, which means that we do not have acid rain in the United States of America or in Canada or in actually most of the civilized world. I mean, most of the industrial world. Russia, China, maybe you're maybe not on board. But anyways, so anyway, just throwing that out there, you know, talk about appreciation. Can you imagine a, like a Republican president pulling off something like that? Let's hope. Now our love is dying. Don't it seem like a good time for kissing? One more kiss, one more kiss to last the years. Ouch. Final track is called Ruined. Uh, very church-like atmosphere. This organ, it's sad and mournful. Um, almost like, almost kind of Springsteen-y in its longing. But also it reminds me, <laughs> okay, I, I got two more toys up here. I got Drew. Sorry, Proust. I got Drusella from um, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I can't make a connection. I, I don't know what the connection is between Drusella and Adrian Lenker. I just secretly suspect that Adrian Lenker is a fan of Drusella. The only celebrity I saw when I lived in L.A. was uh, Juliet Landau. I saw at the 101 Cafe. Uh, but the other one I have here is 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 uh, Shelley Duvall, and uh, and I I really think that. Uh, the way Shelley Duvall sang as olive oil in the movie Popeye was beautiful. And it has this kind of aching, beautiful quality, which I feel in this song. Now, it's better because Shelley Duvall is not a trained singer, but it has that power. We shared in the basement the, as the fern bent to the window and we drew to alignment as the water soaked the pillow. So much coming through every hour too. Can't get enough of you. You come around, I'm ruined. It's a very moving song. The voice gets like doubled and I have an idea. I have an idea. Hey, um, record people. Can we get Billie Eilish to sing this with Adrian Lenker? Don't tell me that it wouldn't work. Don't you dare tell me. It would be so good. Her voice would work perfectly with this. I'm sure she'd do it. Okay. So make it happen. Uh, Illuminati. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll do all sorts of weird stuff for you. The pyramid is power, okay? Can we make this happen? I also watched the video for this because it helps me to better contextualize the album because like just the picture of her like with the hat, like staring like too close guy, uh, that was a bit much like of an image. So the video helps me understand it better. You know, she's like 
floating around in some water. She's like shirtless with her millennial tattoos. And there's all the dogs she's been talking about walking around. Fortunately, the dogs are not being killed. She's dancing with someone who appears to be her lover. I can't quite tell. And it's like double exposure. And it's this kind of like longing and love and dancing and joy and nature and all kind of works up. And then there's a certain point in the music where the instrumental bit gets kind of chopped up and kind of horrifying. And then the double exposure in the video gets kind of chopped up and horrifying fine as well and uh it's just awesome so there we go there's my review thank you so much to adrian lenker for continuing to make such great music we are living in a great time these are my patreons they give me enough money to rebuy that album for my niece maybe i'll get her the new one i think i will so anyways i have to f i don't know where she lives now the address changed a couple times it's okay i'll figure it out I'll hit up my brother. So yeah, they all uh, they all helped me to to get music. Did you like the album? What do you think? Do you not agree with me that she like might be the best songwriter, like out there? That's awesome. All right. Till next time, for uh, Juliet Landau, Olive Oil, Hank Williams, and uh, and Omar. There's the camera.